What is up everybody? Welcome back to another YouTube video. Today we're back on our why series and today it's why do I choose the baits I chew. So stick with it, stay tuned and enjoy this video because we're going to be talking in depth. We're going to have an in-depth review of the baits I choose for tournament fishing and These are 3.75 fat. I wrote fat on here. These are the, you know, fat kitex, the swing impact fat kitex. I think that's what they're called. They're something like that. I'm not exactly sure to be honest, but I use these a ton. I use them on A rigs, you know, swim baits. I use them on swim jigs. I use these a lot. Got a bunch of different colors, mainly white, of course, but there's those. Moving on. This is Z crawls, speed crawls. And nuke punches. So we have the nuke punches. They're an awesome bait. Love those. There's Z crawls, and then we have the Z crawl juniors. There's some of those right there. But I love the Z crawls. They're one of my favorite baits. I use them, you know, on I use those again on buzz baits, swim jigs, regular jigs. I'll use them just Texas rigging things like that. I use those. And the nuke punches. I'll use those occasionally on a jig. But a lot of times I'm flipping that, you know, around grass, around brush piles, something where, you know, there's a lot of debris. These really just go in and out of the cover really good. The reason I have so many Zoom products, Zoom is one of my favorite. They're affordable and they work great. The one negative is you do buy these and they are not in a clamshell. That's one reason I love the Guggenbaits because I know every single one of these baits here is perfect when it gets it out of the package because they're in the clamshell. Here, I'll open it up so y'all can see. If you don't, if you don't know, they're in a clamshell. Whereas these, they're just loose in the bag. So these can get, you know, bent up. The crawls and stuff, they'll get bent up. I still use them when I'm practicing or something in a tournament. Occasionally, you know, I'll pick one out that looks really good, but they tear up anyways. I don't really think it matters a ton on something like this. No, a lot of people will say it doesn't. From my experience, I grab a bait if it's bent up a little bit. I'm not talking, you know, bent over completely where it doesn't even flap, you know, where the flap, like the little kickers on the back don't even kick. I'm talking just a little bit where it looks a little different. Sometimes it might even make it better because it looks like it's wounded. But anyways, these come in a clamshell. They always look perfect. But anyways, that's my one bag here. I have tons of these, as you can see. I've got more in the shop that are extra. But there's the Zoom Z crawls, speed crawls, and the nuke punches. Here's a new bag that I've actually made the last couple of years. This is a Demiki bag. These are all my Demiki baits. These are excellent, you know, for like Demiki rigging or like I showed in my last video of my rods and reels. I'll leave a link of it in the description, but I throw Demiki rigs that are like little swim baits almost, except they have a fluke style bait on the back and a vertical jig in a lot of times. But anyways, that's those. I use these a ton or on in the summer. I know a lot of people use them in the winter. But I actually use them in the summer when <clears throat> the fish are, you know, on bridge pylons and offshore on brush piles and things. I use these a lot. So there's a new bag of these. There's a lot of Zoom. There's some different brands like Berkeley. And then, you know, I've got some weird brands that I don't use very much. I don't use Lunker Hunt except for these single baits. They're just really realistic style, you know, swim baits. I use those. It's the only brand, like the only time I use Lunker Hunt brand is when I'm buying these baits. I don't really have any other baits that I love. But anyways, there's those, you know, who doesn't have some Berkeley Max Scent? You know, these are excellent. This is the flat nose minnow. It works great for stuff like that. Also works good on a drop shot. I do use this stuff on a drop shot some, but this is mainly my Dabinky rig stuff. So there's that. Moving on to another thing that's just like the Namiki rigs. This is flukes. So I've got all kinds of flukes in here. A Carolina rig fluke, scrounger. I'll throw a fluke just on a Texas rig hook, you know, in, you know, spawn, early spring, you know, well, not early spring, early spawn, late spring. I'll use flukes around, you know, brush piles and things like that where I think fish might be setting up. 
here's some flukes this is a different brand that I don't use very much this is bang lures by bass assassin what a name but they work good they look good these are excellent on a Carolina rig because they're pretty big bait you know as you can see that tail right there I can get it to stop shaking see I just barely move it and look at all the movement that it has talking about stop getting it to shake but these work great you can tell the you know the tail just has tons of movement I mean it just won't stop moving and it won't stop moving on you know a Carolina rig either it's got like the little belly hook so you can rig it EWG you could probably rig this you know on a nose hook and stuff like that but these work excellent for you know throwing around brush piles Carolina rig a drop shot I guess if you were look if you were drop shotting like power shotting for some big bass those would work great also but there's those there's also a lot of zoom flukes and stuff in there everybody knows what a zoom fluke is here's a box that I really have redone in the last few months I found these right here and this is an awesome bait company these are net bait I have never used these I found these on sale at a store it was $2.99 a pack and this is the Paca crawl the 3 inch and the Alabama crawl color and it's a net bait I know I think Scott Canterbury who uh, rooms with Scott Martin and stuff he is sponsored by net baits and I didn't even realize he was but I bought these and started using them and man are they amazing I mean I'm gonna start investing in more of their baits because they are just absolutely unbelievable I bought so many packs of these and so I think I bought like four or five packs of each color these are green pumpkin here but they're the three inch they're just for trailers that's it I use these on swim jigs you know jigs I mainly use them on swim jigs but this is probably the best swim jig trailer I've ever seen I mean and I've used them all because I'm a huge swim jig fisherman and I've used these and I mean I went out in May or in earlier May and I was skipping a white swim jig Let's see if I can find the same bait that I had on a white swim jig with I don't know with this bait right here I'll get it out of the package so y'all can see it a little bit better but they're really tiny little things I mean they're just tiny but these arms I mean it's just if y'all have ever seen one of those little car salesman buoys that's doing something like that that is exactly what it looks like and it gets bit so good I mean these baits here are excellent they're tiny they rig up perfect on a swim jig and I mean they just catch fish they move a lot you can just give it a little bit of shake and I know some people are like well if you have the right trailer then you shouldn't have to shake your bait well I shook it and I caught about 15 15 pounds probably 15 16 pounds in like three hours out here skipping jigs under a dock a white swim jig and it was just unbelievable I had so much fun doing that that's a new bait that I use it's excellent of course we got some like super chunks and big salty chunks and things everybody uses those also have like a rattle and chunk I really like these Guggen baits rattle and chunks I actually flip these sometimes and I'll use these on more of a jig style trailer versus a swim jig I use these on a jig dragging on the bottom and things those work excellent and then on to the next thing I'm a huge brush hog person as you can see there's tons of brush hogs not going to dive into this too much everybody knows what a brush hog is Carolina rig bait awesome baby brush hogs they're great for flipping great for everything really just a good you know large creature stock creature style bait they've kind of taken the place of a salamander for me or a lizard you know I don't carry lizards in the boat I don't use them very much because I think a brush hog will catch them just as good but anyways there's those you got a bunch of those use those a lot there goes that into the next box on to the next thing curl tail worms who doesn't love the big monster worm this is a strictly summertime bait it's summertime I do keep flip these every now and then during the spring there's my main color I have a bunch of other colors don't really use them that's Houdini in the zoom magnum worm it's like 10 inches I think excellent bait tons of movement big worm dip the tail in garlic throw it offshore drag it boom you're gonna catch them I promise go get you some of these you need them they are just so good 
in the summertime. Fish just seem to love them, especially later in the summer when they're not moving as much, when the water gets up in to the 90s and stuff. It gets really, really hot here in Tennessee. The water temperature seems like it just never stops going up. But anyways, these work great. You need to get you some big curly tail worms for this summer because they're awesome. Pick up that, pick up a crankbait, and you're going to catch some fish. Anyways, there's curly tail worms. So there's that. And then, as you can see, I've got tons of baits inside the boat or inside my main compartment here. They're just, they're ones that I use on the daily. I have tons of baits. I didn't go over my drop shot bag, but I use these. These are a great drop shot bait. Everybody knows what a robo worm is. Um, trick worms, I use them a lot for Nico rigs, wacky rigs. There's trick worms. This is green pumpkin magic. Great bait. I have some Largo shads. I have a bunch of different baits, but I'll talk, make another video about soft plastics maybe later on if y'all show interest. Just leave a comment in the comment section below if y'all really want to see, you know, an in-depth review and video of all my soft plastics. I will do that. Just make sure you leave a like and subscribe so I know that y'all are enjoying the soft plastic videos and the hard bait videos because this, this is going to be on my why series of like why I choose what I choose. I made my first video on rods and reels and then this one will be on baits. I'm just kind of running through the soft plastics because there's so many that you could talk about this for an hour. I feel like make a video of every single soft plastic. I know Tactical Bassin, hop over to their YouTube channel. They make excellent in-depth reviews of each soft plastic and what they're great for. I may make one of those in the future, but as for now, I'm just going to give you, you know, a brief synopsis of what the baits are good for, what I keep in the boat year round. I don't really take baits in and out of the boat where I'm going and stuff. I keep all the baits that I think can catch fish in the boat 24 seven. But anyways, that's those. This is also, this is the Y series. Like I was saying before, the Y series of, you know, why I choose what I choose. Why do I choose the rods and reels I choose? Why do I choose the boat I choose? Why do I choose the baits? Why do I choose? You see the, um, you know, you see the, uh, trolling motor up there. Why do I choose that? Why do I choose the motor? Why do I choose my electronics? Why? Why do we fish? Why do we do this? It's awesome. But this is the baits. Diving into this middle box, talking too much about random stuff. Let's talk about baits. So first box I just grabbed. I'm just going to grab random boxes out of this and we're going to go over them. This box is bare, fairly empty. This is like a miscellaneous top water popper box. It's really a weird box. I keep it in there kind of randomly. I've got some random, you know, top waters and stuff. Some really old school pop bars, new school pop bars, some random baits like uh, a skitter pop. I've got one skitter pop in the whole boat and it's never touched water before. I got this given to me. I don't know. I would never probably throw it. Maybe for some big up north smallmouth. If I ever travel up there, I do throw these though. That's a Yozuri popper. This is the 3DB series popper floating popper just with a feather tail. I've got some of those. I've got one there, same color. Got one of these. That's another Yozuri. That's actually a saltwater series, I think. I've got, you know, some this is a weird, this is like a striper lure, but I've actually kept it in here because I always think it's going to be good for bass one day, maybe. I don't know. It's got some heavy duty gear on it. That's it. It's an old style. It's probably a 80s or 90s lure. I don't know. I got to give them to me. There's another Rebel Pop R. And then some, you know, like, you know, uh, I don't even know what they're called. I'm drawing a blank. A Florida lure, like a, um, a spin spin bait spy bait type thing this is a couple of those i think that's like a cotton cordell or something yeah this is a cotton cordell roy howdy really you know old style old look florida type lure and then i've got this one right here this is the spin rocket there's that's a better name for them that's the spin rocket i don't throw them very often i have them i throw poppers a lot and pop bars, but I don't throw all the other stuff. I just, I just have those in the boat just in case. But anyways, let's grab this right here. This box, if you guys can't tell, that's spinner baits. Got tons of spinner baits in there, all different kinds. 
I really only throw, you know, half ounce to a three quarter. That one's got a big bait on it. It's actually all bent up. I think this is a half ounce Dobbin spinner bait. It's great for like shad spawn and offshore and stuff. Great warm bait. It's got two willow blades on it. Good color. And then I've got some of my more winter time baits, you know, with two Colorado blades that when that water gets stained and stuff, that neon and white right there with two Colorado blades puts off a lot of thump. Got some different ones, you know, I've got some in the package. Just some really tiny ones when the, every now and then we have some bait in my lake that is not, literally it is probably not a half inch long. Those baits seem to work great. Um, like there's one, this one has super tiny little blades on it. It's got three blades, small, smaller presentation, great bait, but these fish just seem to love it. And then like some really big ones like that, you know, a more offshore stuff, or really warmer type spinner baits when I'm trying to get those fish to eat something big. Spinner baits always catch big bait, always catch big fish. People love throwing chatter baits. I'm still a spinner bait guy. Love them. So that's those. I have all different kinds, but mainly, you know, I stick with a double willow, double Colorado, white, and white and chartreuse. I don't go any more colors than those normally. But anyways, there's that. And then actually, we'll just grab this out. Garlic. I made this little thing so it doesn't spill. This is just some garlic that I use. That's what I dip my baits in a lot of times. Works great. Here's another box that's just kind of random. This is a miscellaneous shrink box, if y'all can see that. Can't tilt it up too much. But this has just got like, you know, certain little baits that I don't throw very often. I'm a big Rapala person, so most of my boxes are filled with Rapala. This actually does have some Rapala, but these are the flat-sided ones. I just don't have enough flat-sided to make a whole box. It's got some little Berkeley baits in there like that. You know, some MR6s, Bill Lewis MR6s, they're more of a flat style crankbait. I just keep these in there because I don't really have a, enough of them to make, you know, their own separate box. But there's those. If y'all can see those, all different kinds of baits in there. Grab two boxes out at a time. This is a good bait. Hold on. I gotta take a couple of baits out. A little secret bait that I have. Let me just hide those over here. And then, show y'all there is my spoon box i'm a huge spoon person this summer i love throwing spoons i've always loved throwing they work great these are actually new i just bought these a couple of weekends ago just big nickels lures i think that's what it called nickels lures you know big spoons and stuff flutter spoons there's some more of them i've got you know some bass pro shop spoons like that's a really big you know gunnersville type spoon there and then I've actually got some smaller ones too. That one's a little bit smaller. If you only see it compared to my hand versus like, you know, a Magnum. That one's huge versus that one. That one's tiny. These work great in our lakes. They actually catch smallmouth really good too. And then that is, you know, that's a normal size flutter spoon versus like something like that. But there's those. I've got some kind of different ones. I don't even know. I don't throw these very much. I've got some really little ones. You know, like a little Clio. Those are pretty good. And then some like, these are actually, get them untangled. These are more of like a striper, you know, stripe type um, spoon. These are excellent. They are really heavy, so you can cast them real far. These are actually from California and made in California, but there are, they're called a crocodile lure Jensen hood hood river or not really sure but they are actually from california i get those from oh, well, i actually got those from a guy who lived in california and then he uh he kind of stopped fishing so he gave me those but anyways there's that here is one of my favorite boxes as you can see there those are frogs I have mainly Spro popping frogs and a couple of other different ones, different brands like Scum frogs. They're pretty decent. I've got a couple of Booyah baits frogs. That's just like like a Booyah bait pad crasher. But most of mine are the you know Spro popping frogs. That's what I like the most. I have a few of the Spro like you know I don't know more narrow nose. I don't know just a Spro frog. 
more for heavy matted grass. These work great for that, but I have those made. Uh, I've got one, you know, this is like a little tiny frog, a little bit baby frog. I actually ordered these frogs. I was so embarrassed. I ordered these frogs, spent about $60 on them. I ordered these frogs here, spent like $60 on them, and they came in, and they were tiny little frogs. They were mini. I messed up, and I ordered the wrong thing. This is a frog. This is a normal size frog here. Normal size popping frog. This is still a popping frog, but it's a little baby one. If you can't see that, it's very tiny. It's super small. I've never actually fished with them. I just have, let's see, two. I've got 10 of them. Yeah, I bought 10 frogs and they were all tiny little ones like that. It's so embarrassing, but I have them. Maybe one day I'll catch like a 10 pounder or do a video fishing with mini baits. That would be kind of funny mini frogs versus a big frog that's pretty much that kind of simple white bluegill and black that's my main colors i'll actually show you guys white bluegill and let's see there it is this is a bluegill color i think that's called killer gill that's white and that's black those are my three main colors i don't really use much different i keep it fairly simple with those all my baits i keep fairly simple as far as color, I don't really, you know, go crazy or anything. But we're going to kind of run through these a little bit so these, this video isn't super long. That's my jig box. It's filled. It's got swim jigs, flipping jigs, black and blue, white and bluegill. That's pretty much in brown. Brown, like, crawl jigs. That's pretty much all I use. I'll open these up for just a second. That's my main flipping jig right there. That's a Guggenbait's Juicy Jig. And then my main swim jig is a... Six cents jig. That's actually that same pack of crawl I was talking about earlier. That bait works great on that swim jig there. Those I use, you know, three eighths to a half and I use a quarter also. I like a little bit lighter swim jig and regular jigs just so they don't fall as much or fall as fast. But that's those. We will go on to medium cranks. There's my crankbait box. It's mostly all Rapala. DT4s, DT6s, and DT8s. If I can get these out, there they are. I use these all the time, year round, anywhere, Tennessee, East Tennessee, West Tennessee, North Alabama, up to Kentucky, anywhere. I like that color a lot. In the summer, I use, I think this is my favorite color, like Tennessee Shad or something. That's my favorite color. I use bright colors crawl colors and then shad colors. My crawl color, my crawl colors are actually in another spot. I keep those all in a separate box by themselves. I keep my crawl crawl crankbaits in a separate box. That's all my red ones. So I just have them all together and I know where they are. There's all my DT6s, DT8, things like that. Square bills, I mean not square bills, red, you know, flat sides in here and stuff. This is just all my crawl crankbaits in here. Little tiny DT4s and things like that. All the way up to a DT16. So, those are that. I use red. I really like the demon color, as you can tell. I throw demon in it, and then I also throw the demon with a little bit of green on it. And, but that's really all I do. I don't throw much different besides red. You know, that demon color is really all I throw. There's a couple of brown ones in there, but that's about it. Okay, moving on. Hopefully the audio is all right because I'm banging and beating around on everything. But this is my deep crankbait box. I went over this in a video earlier of a bait that you need to have this summer. These are my deep crankbaits. I've got all different kinds. DT20s by Rapala. Dredgers by Berkeley, and then of course Strike Kings by those are the 5XDs, and I've got some 6XDs and things like that. There's that box. Fairly simple deep cranking is really bright colors like Citra Shad, and then Shad colors, and that's about it. I don't even use bluegill colors with the deep crank baits, but there's those.
these are two boxes that I don't really use a ton. This is more of a, you know, it's strictly winter with these black marabou jigs and then strictly summer with these white white hair jigs. This is a good box. I don't throw these a ton. There's a hair jig, you know, a little black marabou hair jig with a little bit of red. And then here is my summer hair jigs for big offshore fish. I think that's like a Jenko fishing or something. A lot of these are locally made baits. I have some locally made hair jigs by some guys that make them around here where I live. I use those a lot. They're excellent. I, those are very situational type baits. I don't use those, you know, just if I'm going to go out there to try to find fish. I'm not going to, you know, if I've never fished a lake, I'm not going to tie a hair jig on and go, you know, casting it around to try to find one. Maybe the marabou jig in the winter, but not normally. But anyways, here's my next box. This is a chatterbait box. Everybody loves chatterbaits. I'm a bigger spinnerbait guy, but I have been messing around with these a little bit more. I actually caught a six and a half pounder earlier this year in the colder, I think it was like February, on a red chatterbait. I was throwing a red chatterbait. I think this is like a jackhammer or something or a thunder cricket. I'm not really sure. I don't get into chatterbaits as much as most guys do. I know I've got one of the new Berkeley style ones. It works good. I like the red ones in the, you know, pre-spawn in the winter. And then I also like these during this time. This is just more of a dirty water bait with a little fluke style bait on the back. I've got a, quite a few of those. I've got some of the just the cheap chatter, you know, Z-Man chatter baits in here up at the top, but that's those. Here's a box that I really love. Got a bunch of buzz baits. I'm a huge buzz bait person. I keep it fairly simple. I don't hardly ever throw skirts, but I throw these a lot. This is the Strike King buzz bait. Haven't really found a buzz bait that I just love. Strike Kings are all right. I think I need to, you know, I need to buy the Accent by Jacob Wheeler. I think they're probably pretty good. I just haven't really found a, you know, I haven't found a great, great buzz bait that I just love. These are pretty good. Not even sure. I think it's made by like Big Bite Bait or something. They're pretty good. You can actually bend this where it knocks on that head as, you, as it does right there. They're pretty good. Still got some in the package. Always keep those because you know after a day of fishing your buzz bait's just about ruined. There's those. Let's get both of these baits out. Both of these, these boxes out right here. Been talking a while. I know it's getting boring. Here's these Mega Bass Vision 110s. This is a strictly just a Mega Bass box. I keep I bought these. Haven't even used half of them. I bought this new box. There's those. I have quite a few of those in the Vision 110s, Vision 110 Plus Ones, and Vision 110 Juniors. And then this is my other jerk bait box with just random jerk baits. And the reason I don't use these as much anymore is because I invested got some of the expensive mega bass ones but here's those i have some of the rapala ones got a lot of rapala got some smithwick rogues they're excellent and then i also just have some tiny little ones mostly rapala mostly smithwicks that's pretty much all i use in those as you can see there there's all different kinds and if y'all like i said before if y'all are interested in you know me going through each specific type bait if y'all want to see a jerk bait video then leave a comment down in the comment section. Let me know that y'all like these videos, like this type of videos of showing you the baits and stuff and how I'll show, you know, an in-depth review and set up. I'll show you what rods, reels, line, what type of bait, what situations I use for each, you know, jerk baits. I'm more simple. I know tactical bass and I mentioned them, mentioning them again. They go into an in-depth review. They fish all across the country. I don't. I'm more, you know, you know, regional. I do fish in a lot of different types of lakes, but I keep everything a lot more simple and I still catch fish. They might catch a couple more, but I don't think, you know, having one extra, you know, black dot on the tail of a jerk bait is going to make the fish bite better, whereas a lot of people think it does. Here's a square bill box. I won't talk much about it. It's just got a bunch of square bills in it. It's got bluegill, black and yellow which is a great you know dirty water bait and then shad colors that's pretty much all a lot of strike king a little few rapalas but mostly strike king like the square bills that they use 
Let's talk about another fun box here. This is a top water box. Who doesn't love top water? This has got my spooks in it, my walking baits, pencil poppers, and then my whopper ploppers, things like this, where it's like a little pencil popper. And then it's also got my big baits like this. I love this bait. It's probably my favorite top water of all time. A heat on saltwater super spook. And then it's also got some of the mini super spooks. As you can tell, all the baits are tangled up. And then it's also got some of the whopper ploppers. So that's that. I keep it simple. You know, I got bone color here, chrome here, and a couple of other different patterns. It's more of the action of the bait than, you know, the color chrome versus bone or white. They pretty much do the same thing. Here's this box. It's a new box also. It's got Mega Bass Dark Sleepers in it and also Mega Bass Mag Drafts. I'm a huge Mag Draft person. Love throwing one of these. And then I got these. These are fairly new. We haven't even thrown these yet. Can't really tell you much about them. Heard good things about them. Dark Sleepers. Bought three of them. Going to try those one time when we get on a good smallmouth bite or something offshore. Got a, quite a few Mega Bass Mag Drafts. I got like three in there, a couple there, a couple there. Really like those baits. But that is pretty much it. I do also have, I can find them, I have these little boxes. Lots of these little boxes here that I use with the swim bait heads and stuff in them. These are all my white ones with blades and then these are all of the gray ones. This here, more of these boxes. This is like my Domeki rig head box. My offshore shaky heads, my small shaky heads. Ned rigs, stuff like that. Don't use those a ton. Use them every now and then. Very situational type and seasonal. And then I've got another one of these box. This is a great box to have if you are a more tournament fisherman. You need to have one of these boxes. It's excellent. As you can see, treble hooks, all different sizes. I've got these, you know, by size. I think it's like five, four, three, twos. And then I've got some over here. I've got some with the feathers. I've got some that have the little BMC blades on them. But those are just excellent treble hooks. It's always good to change the treble hooks out on your crankbaits, especially the Mega Bass jerk baits. You don't have to change the hooks out because they're already excellent. But you always just need to look at these. Get some of these. Some of these are Gamagatsu's on this side. Some of these are Mustad. They're both excellent. But, you know, aftermarket hooks are always a really good thing to invest in. If you're more of a serious tournament fisherman, you catch more fish, you don't lose as many. And they stay sharp a whole lot longer. But I do keep them in these foam things because I feel like it keeps them sharp a whole lot longer. Because I feel like if you put all these, you know, in a box, like a plastic box, they rattle around. They're going to get dull and they're going to beat up against each other and they're not going to be as sharp as you want them to be. So there's trouble hooks. Get you one of these boxes, foam little slip boxes. They work excellent for stuff like that. But anyways, that's pretty much it. That's the baits I use in keeping the boat year round. I don't move much stuff around. I keep those fairly, you know, simple with my baits. I keep them all like that. If y'all want a more in-depth review, of course, leave a comment down in the comment section. Hope y'all enjoyed this video on the baits I use. You know, I didn't go into super depth of every single bait. A couple of things I showed y'all that you really need to, you know, look forward to and invest in, you know, certain baits that are really, really good, that do really make a difference. You know, does the $5 bait make a difference than the $6 bait? That's the big key in fishing. You got one side, you got the other. Some people think it does, some people think it don't. Kind of in the middle and don't. I'm kind of in the middle and on the don't side because I really don't think, you know, that $25 bait is going to make much different than the $15, $20 swim bait that you have. But anyways, hope y'all enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and subscribe that really helps me out also turn on that little notification bell so you're notified when i make videos this is called the y series and i'm gonna just go over about everything about why i use what i use but anyways hope you enjoy and as always chase your dreams <laughs>